Hey guys, welcome to episode two of SEO in the Shed with me, John Earnshaw, the Chief Product Evangelist at PyData Metrics. And today I'm going to be talking about cannibalization, which happens to be one of my all time favorite SEO related subjects. And today I'm going to be looking at exactly what cannibalization is, why it's a problem, how you can detect it, and finally, how you can go about curing it. Now, we haven't got time in this episode to look at how to prevent it, so I'm going to save that for a future episode, which is going to be all about contextual optimization. So, okay, now there are any number of reasons why your website can suddenly lose visibility in Google. It could be down to an algorithmic update, and we've seen plenty of those recently. It could be down to the fact that your competitor has suddenly um, overtaken you. Uh, due to the fact that they have perhaps optimized their content much more effectively. Um, it could be down to a technical error. But one of the main problems impacting visibility of content these days is cannibalization. Now, we've divided it here into two broad categories, internal and external. External, that's really about stolen content. That's about having uh, duplicate content, for example, on an affiliate site. Um, but today we're going to focus on those internal factors. Now, there are four broad categories of cannibalization. Internal conflict, subdomain conflict, international conflict, and finally, the much misunderstood semantic flux. We'll save that for another time as well. But today, we're going to focus primarily on internal conflict. So let's begin with an example. And we've got a wonderful example here of a site that was performing really well. Okay, this is a travel site that was performing really well for the search term cheap hotels in Crete. Okay, now suddenly their visibility vanishes. Okay, and they drop from position I don't know, seven, eight on page one to outside the top 100. And then they reappear in around position 60 odd. They rise up to position 70, then they drop down, then they come back up. And what's going on here is that we're having different pages returning over this period of time. So it's not just one page that's dropping and coming up. But what we see here is the hotels in Crete page that suddenly loses visibility that's replaced by the home page, which is then in in turn, replaced by a region in Crete. So um, Google is actually becoming increasingly confused here due to the similar theming of these three pages. Google really can't decide which one to return. And the fact is these pages aren't connected together effectively. What this website is not doing, it's not saying to Google, this page is the one that we want to return. This is the doorway into our world for hotels in Crete. So why is this a problem? Well, let's take a look at this example here. Okay, so in this Pi Position Explorer chart, this site has dropped from position two to outside the top 100 for a seven day period of time between May the 4th and May the 11th. Okay, this is a money page. It's actually bringing in around 600 pounds a day from that position two for one of its key search terms. Now, due to that cannibalization, due to the fact that they haven't made it clear to Google which is the doorway into their world for, for this particular search term, okay, they've lost a week's worth of visibility, which amounts to around 4,200 pounds in revenue. So that's a lot of money. Okay, now what happens often in these kind of scenarios is that websites take this hit without really knowing what's happening. And if you've got either no visibility or just a weekly view on your performance, then you're only going to see two data points over that period of time. What you're going to see effectively is a straight line. You're going to miss that cannibalization. That's why daily data is so important. Okay. Now, with those straight lines, you really need to see what's going on behind there. There's nothing more suspicious than a straight line. Then we have the glass ceiling effect. And I see this so often where you have a, a big authoritative website and a huge chunk of their content is actually sitting around position 11 or 12, 13, 14, sitting under this glass ceiling and simply cannot push past that. But when you look behind that, when you look behind those lines, you will see, for example, with this instance for this um, high street fashion retailer, um, you haven't actually got one URL or one content returning. You've got multiple pieces of content returning over time. Because again, we haven't made it abundantly clear to Google which page, which piece of content we want to be the doorway into our world. And then you can have 
inline conflict where you actually get a steady visibility on page one, but it's not one piece of content that's returning. It's one piece replaced by another and replaced by another. And from a brand perspective, from a customer confusion perspective of coming to your website one day or Googling your website, finding one doorway, the next day coming back, finding a different one, the next day finding another one, that's uncoordinated, it's haphazard, it's incoherent. So that's something you need to watch out for. Don't just be happy that your uh, position is three and then it's three again the next week and then three again the week after. Is it the right page that's returning and is it consistent? Okay, so how can you detect it? Well, first of all, you need to analyze your visibility daily. You need to set up an alert system that will tell you, for example, if one page has been replaced by another okay because it starts off steadily and now that Google has claimed that it's stopping clustering we are starting to see an increase in the amount of conflict whereas before you might have one two or three URLs stacked up on page one so that's actually stopping now okay you need to track all your URLs every URL every page every subfolder every subdomain because that's the only way to really understand if you're suffering from any form of cannibalization of course, you have to track down uh, to the top 100. You have to monitor the top 10 pages of Google because very often you can be on page one and you can be replaced by another page. It could be a PDF. It could be um, a page that you didn't even know existed, a blog post, for example. You can be replaced in position 87 or 96. Okay, And we've actually done testing at Pi and we've seen cannibalization and fluctuation occurring on page one down to pages maybe in position two or three hundred. You need to track all your competitors. You need to track the entire SERP ecosystem because it could be that one of your competitors has actually taken a piece of your content and used that. Um, it may be innocent. It may be, for example, um, an affiliate that's using a piece of your content, a product description. Now that can cause conflict. You need to track the past. You need to be able to go back in time to identify those trends and patterns in cannibalization. And finally, you need to turn to Google. You need to start using those site operators um, and adopt a process of contextual optimization. As I said, I'm going to cover that in a future episode. And that's an amazing technique, an amazing strategy that will help you prevent all of this cannibalization from happening in the first place. OK, so how do you cure it? And I'd like to begin with a quote from Natasha McNamara, who I was talking to the other day. And she said, internal conflict seems to be on the increase. And it's definitely the biggest killer of content performance. And she goes on to say, which I totally agree with, the best possible practice for any new site is to plan your content structure within an inch of your life. Natasha, I couldn't agree with you more. So what do you need to do? You need to use data. Okay, First and foremost, use data to identify the amount of conflict and the patterns of conflict. You know, you should all be having conflict reports generated on a weekly basis. Of course, you need to use things like canonical tags appropriately and also limit Google's access to those facets that people are not going to be searching for. So make life a little easier for Google. And talking of making life a little easier for Google, um, make it absolutely clear when you're creating a piece of content, um, what search term this is going to be optimized for. Okay. Okay. Think about those doorways into your world and make them clear. Don't have overlapping doorways or you're going to suffer from cannibalization. Okay. Address the relationship between pages, particularly when it comes down to um, categories and products okay and it's it's so often the case that a product will suddenly get authority thanks to a lot of links coming to it and this pr product then starts to conflict with the category page so use internal linking carefully again to leave it in no doubt that um, this is the doorway into your world Retheme pages are necessary. If your title tags are too similar, think about downgrading the theming of some of those uh, pages that are conflicting. But of course, to do all of this, you need, you need to understand the amount and the nature and the patterns of cannibalization that your site is facing. And finally, 
practice contextual optimization. I cannot emphasize that enough. And this is all about before you inject content into your ecosystem, okay, get a really good understanding of the content within your ecosystem that is potentially complementary, okay, and potentially conflicting, okay. But I'm going to save that for a whole new episode, okay. So thanks for watching, guys. You can download my duplicate content flowchart below. Don't forget to uh, sign up for my Shed newsletter um, for more um, hints and tips and SEO related stuff. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. All those details are below. See you next time.